today on the CTV News at 5, Kaya warning after another close call in Lethbridge. Plus, a different kind of close call for a Lethbridge daredevil. And more rallies against the Redford government. CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. If you're walking or jogging in Lethbridge's River Valley, you may want to avoid the pathway along Bridge Drive west of the Par 3 golf course. Early this morning, a jogger was followed by a coyote that came within 10 feet before being chased away. And just yesterday, a coyote attacked a dog on the same trail. Fish and Wildlife officers say there's been at least one other complaint of a coyote acting aggressively there. Terry Vogt reports. Fish and Wildlife officers say the first step in their investigation is to try and locate any coyotes that are in this area. <laughs> One method they're using is an electronic call to draw any coyotes out into the open. <laughs> officers suspect the aggressive coyote may have a den with pups somewhere near the Bridge Valley Golf Course. It was just up this pathway that Tiffany O'Brien's husband had a confrontation with a coyote while jogging early this morning. He just looked back and it was getting closer. It was about 10 feet away from him. So at that point he kind of like turned around and like stood up big and screamed at it and it kind of turned around and he actually kind of thinking that it might turn around and start following him again. He kind of um, chased it a little bit back into the coulee and then he picked up a big rock and threw it at him. A woman jogging with her lab retriever also had a run-in with a coyote in the same area Tuesday afternoon. The coyote approached from behind and went after the dog, which received bite wounds to the tail. Coyote sightings are not unusual here. Regulars at the Par 3 golf course say a female coyote has had a den nearby for at least eight years. Yeah, oh yeah, she, she'd out. be up on the hill watching us, and the pups would be with her watching us golfing. You know, she never ever come down or chased us. It's not known yet if that coyote is responsible for these latest incidents. In the meantime, fish and wildlife officers recommend joggers or hikers use other trails or at least exercise caution, especially when walking small pets. Terry Vogt, CTV News, Lethbridge. Here are some tips if you do encounter a coyote. Respond aggressively by waving your arms, making yourself appeal large. Throw rocks or sticks to scare it away. Now you can also shout or scream or carry a whistle. It's recommended though that you do not turn or run because that could actually cause the coyote to chase after you. The phrase lucky to be alive could not be more true than in this next story. Lethbridge adventure athlete Johnny Corthias was attempting a legal jump from a bridge in Idaho when his gear malfunctioned. Immediately hit in the water, I could feel my left leg break. <clears throat> um, so broke my femur, snapped it, uh, dislocated both my shoulders, broke my left scapula, and uh, broke a couple ribs, and cracked my uh, sternum. This is the bridge the 25-year-old was jumping from, the Perrine Bridge in Twin Falls. It's 486 feet from ground. His medical costs will be around $20,000, but Corthea says he has insurance and health coverage that will pay for all about $5,000. Doctors credit his survival in part to his excellent health and fitness. Corthea says he is blown away by all the support that he's received from around the world. I think the, I think the total descent off the bridge through the fall and into impact was about six seconds. So did it seem like six seconds? Or at that point, did it seem like a lot longer? Mm, tough to say. Maybe a little bit longer because, uh, you know, at that time, there's so much more going through your brain than normally. So maybe it felt like a little bit longer, but it it happened quickly for sure. Yeah, I wasn't falling for minutes like, oh, here we No, It was like, oh, boy, here we go. So Corthea's first shot to base jumping fame after leaping from Lethbridge's high level bridge with a parachute. He's been charged by CP rail. The case is still before the courts. Tomorrow on our News at 5, we'll hear more from Johnny about the sport and science behind base jumping. Lethbridge Regional Police say a sex offender has breached the conditions of his release. 26-year-old Kevin Billings is prohibited from having any contact with women under 18 years of age, accessing the internet or possessing devices that 
are capable of accessing the internet. Billings was taken into custody without incident. He is now charged with 15 counts of failing to comply with a probation order, as well as five counts of failing to comply with a probation. An American truck driver has pleaded not guilty after a collision that killed a southern Alberta man in early March. It happened at the intersection of Highways 23 and 519 near Nobleford. There was heavy fog that reduced visibility when the northbound van collided with the tractor-trailer unit. The police now say was making an illegal U-turn. The 57-year-old driver of the van from Champion died from his injuries in hospital. 48-year-old Thomas Susenbach of Minnesota has been charged with dangerous driving and making an illegal U-turn. He will stand trial in November. A Cranbrook woman has been sentenced to one year in prison for the drowning death of a toddler she was babysitting. 29-year-old Tammy Bouvet was originally charged with second-degree murder but pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of criminal negligence causing death. In May of, 2000, of 2011, Bouvet was babysitting this girl, 19-month-old Iana Teeple, when Bouvet called 911 saying the child was found unresponsive in a bathtub. The toddler died shortly after an autopsy showed that she had also suffered head injuries. Bouvet told police the little girl had tipped over in a booster seat earlier in the day. While she was out on bail, Bouvet also tried to rob a gas station. Bouvet was sentenced to a year in prison for attempted robbery. She was given time and a half credit for the time already served and she will remain behind bars for six months before starting a two-year probation. So the long weekend forecast story, the first half uh, looking a little drier than the second half. Conditions right through the weekend, no doubt about it. Each day we have a chance of shower attached to those days as well, even tomorrow and even tonight we have a chance of some shower activity. So we're getting uh, a fair amount of precipitation pushing across from BC and also south of the border in the wraparound. I'll tell you all about it in a couple of minutes. Thank you, Dory. The Alberta Union of Provincial Employees is once again rallying against the Redford government. We say fight back! They say cut back! We say fight back! This rally along Fairmont Boulevard was one of several held across the province today. Employees are upset by a decision to move $52 million from seniors' care homes across Alberta to supported living spaces which don't provide the same level of care anymore the economy is actually starting to take off again and these guys don't you know these folks don't want to end up locked into a you know an inferior deal that actually sees them lose uh, lose ground financially over the next two or three or four years or however long that contract you know extends to the union says they've been busy for a couple of weeks dealing with concerns of workers the University of Lethbridge is set to present a deficit budget to its Board of Governors today. President Michael Mann says the budget will show a $3 million deficit, which will be offset by some one-time funds that the school has available to it. Assuming that the budget is passed, they will then move forward with the plan to find additional funding needed to meet the expectation of provincial budget cuts, around $12 million being cut from the province. Mann says they'll also form eight committees tasked with everything from creating greater synergies to revenue enhancement, which will report back at the end of June. For now, though, Mann says they've come a long way in a short time. I, I'm actually, frankly, we're 75% we're plus there in a month and a half, and uh, I actually think our, our group has done an outstanding job getting to where we are. We have some more work to do, but they've worked very hard to get where we are. Well, a day after Lethbridge Mayor Ray Kododek announced he will not be seeking re-election this fall, we have our first official candidate. Uh, I plan to organize a campaign to uh, seek the mayor's spot come this fall. Um, Baron Ellis are, says he'll seek the mayor's chair in October. Nothing. He was first elected to city council in 2010. Ellis holds a political science PhD and is an instructor at Lethbridge College. He says he has been overwhelmed by the amount of support he's already received from the community. Ellis says he expects to run his campaign based on the same principles that got him elected last term to council and will launch a formal campaign in June. I had enough support within the community to suggest that a, we can put together a viable campaign based on similar themes as what I campaigned on for, uh, for Alderman in 2010. Um, reasonable, responsible and reliable leadership. So far no other councillors have expressed interest in seeking the mayor's chair publicly. Well, tonight's the night. Close to 500 anxious grade 7 to 12 students from across Canada will find out 
whose hard work paid off the most. Nearly $1 million in cash prizes and scholarships will be awarded to the top students as the Canada-wide Science Fair gets ready to wrap things up tomorrow. Today proved it was anything but over, though. Jeanette Rocher reports. It may look like a toy, but this little Land Rover was designed to detect hydrogen sulfide. Its purpose? to prevent injuries and deaths in oil and gas fields. I've been building robots for about two years. Its inventor, 13-year-old Jesse Plamondon, says when he first arrived at the Canada-wide science fair, he was pretty anxious about having his robot judged. It's very overwhelming, just can't believe I'm here. Since it's my first time, I got nothing to lose. At the beginning, it's uh, you're kind of nervous because you don't want to know what you're going to expect. But afterwards, the judges here are very nice and they actually uh, un if they take the time to understand your project and see it from your perspective. And now that the judging is over and the pressure is off, these 481 young scientists can focus on mentoring the 1,200 students who are touring the science fair. Stronger people would break people's ribs during CPR and not even notice it. I feel more important now because um, I can actually interact with other people who um, are interested in science and um, it's a great opportunity. And those visiting students didn't just listen and look, they got their hands dirty, digging for dinosaur bones and checking out a human brain up close. We were using the power of gravity to separate the oil from the water after we shook it up. I'm gonna learn a lot more stuff that I didn't know. I'm happy to be here. I'm very excited to see more. Jeanette Roche, CTV News, Lethbridge. The school tour continues through tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Science Fair winners are being announced right now at the NMAX Center. If you want to check out the action, there is a live stream on the Canada-wide Science Fair website, or you can catch the winning projects tomorrow from 9 until noon at the university. Time now for a look at the day's markets.